sneaky. <laughs> Out of compassion for them. That's why I'm sneaky and devious here. That's why I tell all these jokes. It's actually to keep you here long enough I can teach you not to be naughty. <laughs> Go on. Ah, but this is what devious means. It comes from the word deva. <laughs> it means of the devas. <laughs> okay, any other question? Okay, I think that's... Oh, you got one? Yes? Go on. What are the requisites? It's usually two. There must be one I haven't heard. But <laughs> the two are actually the words of another and work of the mind which goes to the source. These are the two causes for the attainment of stream winning. If that's what you're meaning here. And it's a very important. The words of another is actually understanding, getting some knowledge of what the Buddha taught. And the other thing is with that map, work of the mind which goes back to the source, is the literal meaning of Yonisa Manasikara. Manasikara is work of the mind. Yoni is the womb. Going to the source of things. Where did that thought come from? Where did the body come from? Where is mind? Go to the center of things. Which is why in this meditation retreat I've already mentioned that you go into the center of things to get deep meditation. To find out what the mind is. What is will? What is knowing? To go to the center of things so you can see those things for yourself and know what they are. And you use the map as your means, as your direction to go inwards. When you've got those two together, you've got the map, and you go deep within yourself, you'll find the emptiness inside. I, I should really give this simile later on in the talk on Anatta. A long time ago I gave this simile of the driverless bus. Life, using the old simile of going on a journey, life is like going on a journey in a bus. Sometimes you're driving along the road, and you look out the window and the scenery is so beautiful. It's delightful. Meadows and trees and waterfalls and a wonderful sky. And you tell the bus driver, oh look, it's so wonderful outside. Slow down. Stop. I want to enjoy this magical time. And a lot of the time, the bus driver doesn't slow down. A lot of the time, he speeds up. And other times, you're looking out the window and you see this disgusting, terrible scenery, like a toxic waste dump, all grey and miserable. And you tell the driver, hurry up, get out of here, it's not nice. And very often, your bus driver slows down or even stops. Now, in this simile, you are like the person looking out the window of your journey. Sometimes you experience some wonderful pleasant times and you want them to last forever. But it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes the pleasant experiences, they don't last as long as they should do. The bus driver speeds up. Sometimes we have unpleasant times, painful times, disappointing times. We want to get out as soon as we can. But sometimes the unpleasantness lasts longer than it should. So back to the bus. The person sitting in the seat says it's all the bus driver's fault. Let's find this bus driver and teach the bus driver a lesson so that when there's pleasant scenery to slow down, when there's unpleasant scenery to speed away. In the simile, that's trying to control your happiness and suffering. So you can always experience more suffering. 
Sorry, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> they can always experience more happiness and less suffering. So you want to find out who is driving you. What is this will which drives you, your intention in Pali, Jaitana, the bus driver of your body and mind? In the bus, eventually you find the bus driver's seat. The one driving your life. This is what you do in meditation. You go deep inside of yourself till you find who is driving you. What is this will, intention, choice? Who is doing this decision making? Back to the bus. When you find the bus driver's seat, you get one of the biggest shocks of your life. You get the insight which changes the way you look at the bus. Because when you find that bus driver's seat, you find it's empty. There's no bus driver there. When you go deep in your meditation, you find there's no one inside driving this bus. It's cause and effect running according to nature, dependent origination. The result of that is that you go back in your seat, you sit down and you stop complaining. You stop the craving. That's called the simile of the driverless bus. When you see no self, the empty bus, or rather the, the driverless bus, then you stop trying to control your journey. You let go and soon you gain full enlightenment. Going to the source of things sees the emptiness at the heart of you. Do you understand? I'll give you one last story before I close up this evening. This was a story from my own life, one of those wonderful occasions with my teacher, Ajahn Chah. You can't get more profound than this. When my teacher started to become sick, in our monastery, which was about six kilometers from his monastery, the monastery where the Western monks were being trained, we built a sauna. The idea was twofold. One was to help our teacher because saunas were allowable in the time of the Buddha and they're supposed to be good for your health. Maybe this will help Ajahn Chah have a long life. That was reason number one, service to our teacher. Reason number two, if our teacher came for his sauna, we'd also see him once a week and he'd always give a Dhamma talk. That was a selfish reason. <laughs> to get our teacher to visit once a week. And it worked so well. He'd come every week to take his sauna. He'd give a Dharma talk first of all and then we'd go to the sauna, help him do our services like help wash his bathing cloth, hand him his towel, that sort of stuff. And it was a great to see your teacher once a week. On this one occasion, he came for his sauna, he gave this amazing Dharma talk. Sometimes he was on form, it was beautiful stuff. After the talk, I was so inspired that I knew there was other monks who would look after him. I went behind the hall and just sat meditation instead of helping my teacher. And because of my inspiration, I had a wonderful deep meditation. It was beautiful. When I came out of the meditation, I was by myself, there's no one around. The first thought which came up, I wonder if my teacher is still in the sauna. Maybe I can go and do my services now for him. So I started walking from the hall to the sauna. I was too late. Ajahn Shah had finished his sauna because I met him on the path. We crossed paths. He was coming with two Thai men on his way back to his car to go back to his monastery. And so we crossed. He was coming with two Thai men. I was going the opposite direction. There are times when your teacher looks right through you. That was one of those occasions. He stopped and he bored right into me with his mind. Because he saw through the smile on my face 
I had just had a very deep and powerful meditation. So he decided to try and enlighten me. He looked at me again, holding my eyes with his own, with his great power, and said, Brahma Wangso. This is what he said in Thai. I'll translate it into English. He said, Brahma Wangso. Why? He asked me the question, why? It was a moment to try and make me a full arahat. I replied, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) And he did just what you did. He started laughing. Because I was just being stupid. I was still a young monk. I didn't understand the answer to the question, why my goodness? But, out of the great compassion which a teacher has, he smiled and he looked at me again. He said, Brahma Wangsa, I'll tell you the answer. It was great. From a great arahat, he told me the answer to the great question, why? He said, if anyone asks you that question again, this is the answer. The answer to the question why is, are you ready for it? The answer to the question why, I don't think I should tell you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The answer to the question why is, there's nothing. That's what he said in Thai. My me alai. Emptiness. There's nothing. And then he looked at me. Do you understand? I said, yes. He said, no you don't. And then he went away. So that's the answer to the question, why? There's nothing. Do you understand? No, you don't. (laughs) That's a powerful, deep answer. There's nothing. No one in here. Anatta, sunyata, emptiness. That's the deepest answer. If you go to the center of things, Jonas the Manasika, a work of the mind which goes to the source, that's what you find. There's nothing there. And I'll leave you with that to go home with. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> okay, now, we usually like to share merits, so we'll do the sharing of merits now. I'll do the chanting. You can please follow along with me. This is sharing the merits of listening to the Dharma with all our departed relations and other beings. Idam me nyatinang ho tu sukita hon tu yatayo. Idam me nyatinang ho tu sukita hon tu yatayo. Idam me nyatinang ho tu sukita hon tu yatayo. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. And for those of you who like to come again tomorrow night, it's the way we look at life, otherwise the five hindrances. And I'm not sure if this list is actually on the board. Have they put this list on the board? Yes, the list is on the board here, the talks for the next few days on the evening. So it's all about meditation, enlightenment, deep teachings, but try and get a bit of ordinary teachings with them as well. So have a nice night. See you tomorrow, maybe. Good night.